Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on the various social media pages that we are up on these days, including, of course, El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, YouTube, El Paso History TV. Also, we have Twitter pages and Twitch.tv under Andrew J. Polk, and, of course, some of our partner pages and groups including Remember and El Paso When. Today is Saturday, February 18th, and today we're talking about, of course, the history surrounding but also upcoming performances featuring and creative reenactments and uh, other, shall we say, creative performances involving the figure, the man, the myth, the legend kind of situation of Billy the Kid with the upcoming Billy the Kid Festival happening in the region this next weekend so not this one but the next one so be talking with uh, some of the creatives involved with that uh, of course again all the places that you can find us here we do take comments online but it really if you want to interact with the show here there's a good conversation that happens there every weekend but this is of course the place where we also say texas history begins in el paso taking that kind of regionally in this sense here today the el paso borderland region overall and of course we do have a history moment at the start of hour two of the program as we usually do from documentary filmmaker jack and Polk's talking about the start of the El Paso Public R- Library, how it got its start. And so joining us here in studio today, we are joined by uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and uh, Dan Crow, vice president of the Friends of Pat Garrett and a singer and songwriter. Thank you all very much for joining us here in studio today. Thank you, Andrew, for having us. Thank you. Absolutely happy to have you all on so we can talk about this and the things going on here. So we are talking about the Billy the Kid Festival that is coming up again this coming weekend, February 24th through 26th. And we have uh, some uh, images to display of that, of course, talking about uh, the titular character and the most famous, if not the no longer the only picture that is now out there of, you know, William Bonnie, Billy, the better known as Billy the Kid. And so when we're talking about the festival around him, there's a... Uh, a lot that goes into a concept here because, I mean, depending on who you ask, I feel kind of Billy the Kid is not exactly the same kind of uh, activities being done, but a similar type of regarded figure as, like, say, Pancho Villa. There's a lot of people who may be like, oh, you know, he's a famous, you know, you know, outlaw, whatever, freedom fighter, however you want to put it. Or people are like, oh, no, he's despicable. He's an awful person. So you can find kind of a lot of opinions somewhere in between. And so this kind of explores, well, frankly, a lot of it, right? Uh, yes, it does. Um, the The play is based on a book that I wrote, mm. uh, The Trial of Billy the Kid, and the play uh, covers the trial of Billy for uh, shooting at Sheriff William Brady on April 1st, 1880. And they shot through portholes in the corral wall. And so no one saw who actually fired the shot. There were eight mm. men behind the corral. So that's what makes it a mystery. Uh, did Did Billy kill him or did he not? In the end, he was the only one that was ever charged with any crime involving the Lincoln County War. And as we know what happened, he was tried in Messia. Mm-hmm. And I feel very unjustly he was convicted of killing Sheriff Brady. Uh, the many kind of goings on with that. I mean, just the few phrases you brought up here, including, you know, Lincoln County War, other ones come to mind, such as uh, uh, regulators and the entire concept of what was going on in this region at that point in time of, you know, the advent of the way ranching was becoming, fencing in, open range. I mean, there's so many swirling topics that can be shorthanded into the phrase and concept of Billy the Kid, and of course has been portrayed many times in a lot of different ways in popular media. So, as you mentioned there, and you do have a copy of the book here with you, if you want to hold that up to uh, show that off. the, And we do have uh, that, if you want to see a little bit closer there for those on screen, the trial of Billy the Kid, and then we've got the... Uh, full dust jacket as well of the book there. So uh, that is available. And so you wrote this one. And so that's what the play is then based on, right? That is correct. And we got other performances that'll be coming up as part of the weekend that we got going on here again, starting February 24th. That'll be the first performance of the play there that Friday at 7 p.m. But then you also will be doing a performance of arguably one of the more famous movies, I would say, that has come out kind of on related subjects, not necessarily covering the exact same things, but I mean, Young Guns, that has, I mean, a lot of famous names and characters in there. Won't delve into that that much. And then you've also got musical performances, and that's where you come in a little bit more, right, Dan? That's right. I, um, when, when we, um, I had been writing and producing music for kids and families for years, 
And then a few years ago, associating with the historical societies in the area, I got interested in all of these legendary figures and characters, in particular Billy and Pat Garrett and all that, and that inspired me to write some music about that. So we're going to do a concert on Saturday night there. It's going to be a big, fun weekend. A lot of entertainment. Absolutely. A lot going on there. And I, for, particularly for those out in Radio Land, I don't want to miss the fact that uh, you're wearing a very particular T-shirt right now. Maybe a little hard to see, but from my perspective, the Pat Garrett Western Heritage Festival with uh, Pat Garrett on it there. So just want to, you inhabit this very much. Oh, and very much. And this was a festival that we started the whole process with David and I co-producing uh-huh. several years ago and our friend Carla Steen too has been part of it she's my singing partner in the concert by the way it's Crow and Carla and we ah, have, right anyway so lots of top wonderful musicians from the area that are going to be with us that night absolutely so this will be happening primarily at the Rio Grande Theater all totally all yep. uh, entirely totally so yep. I'm naming a couple of couple other important things including uh you know sponsored by the Doniana County Historical Society and Friends of Pat Garrett so that'll be happening at 211 North Main Street there in Las Cruces at the Rio Grande Theater so if anyone wants information about what we're going to be talking about the performances the details on it riograndetheater.com will be a website to direct people towards again Rio Grande Theater spelled T H E A T R E Dot com. They're doing that spelling of theater there for <laughs> here just to make sure that's in mind. But you search for it, your favorite social media, even if you don't spell it the way they do, you can probably find it. But yeah. that's the exact website. So talk a little bit about how this kind of came about. I mean, you're referencing one of the, the previous times here. So how did we get to kind of where we are here today with this upcoming set of performances? Yeah. Well, David, do you want to take this? Well, we started originally with the idea of doing Western plays combined with music. Okay. So this is the third festival that we, we have had. Uh, the first one involved the trial of the person who killed Pat Garrett. Mm-hmm. His name was Wayne Brazel. The next year we did the trial of the men who were charged with abducting Colonel Fountain and his son. Mm, okay. Okay. So then this year we decided, this, this festival we decided to do the trial of Billy the Kid. So all of those take place in New Mexico and partially here in El Paso and sure. in Texas. Mm-hmm. And they're all related to this particular area. And one thing that's unique is no one has written books about the trials, the all these Western trials. Yeah, okay. And so I wrote an entire book about the trial. Uh, the most that had ever been written about it before was, was a few paragraphs, really. Mm-hmm. And I have a whole book on it. But that's something that's interests us both, which is the legal aspect of it, the trial part of it. Okay. And the sensationalistic part, too, in regards to the films. Uh, and when initially, right. when we started uh, this, <laughs> get putting this together, uh, David had written a book about the history of um, the, the, the theaters and motion movies in uh, motion picture theaters in, in Las Cruces. Oh, and okay. um, it was very interesting. And we, we, we talked about this in the process. We said the very first Billy the Kid movie was made in 1930. Hmm. And it w- and it premiered at the Rio Grande Theater, where this event really? is taking place in 1930. It was one of the first talkies, as a matter of fact. And uh, yeah. in fact, uh, some of the historical characters that had been participants in the Lincoln County War, for example, Susan McSween, Alexander McSween's wife, actually got to see that film in, in the theater, <laughs> watching the Billy the Kid movie. <laughs> one, one of the reasons in uh, modern movies anyway, though, is put the uh, not based on actual figures kind of thing, because sometimes they, particularly if you're talking about this, can they can have still been around. <laughs> exactly. Well, the second movie that was made about uh, Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett was by Howard Hughes, mm-hmm. and that was delayed because of censorship issues. Uh-huh. Be- because in that movie, Billy the Kid escaped, and they put a body in his place. Well, he was sued by the Garrett family, and Howard Hughes had to settle. Ooh, yeah, because the Garrett family, of course, was totally upset by that. Yeah. So, I mean, we're we're talking about shades of reality. I mean, these are, of course, you know, performances recorded, you know, put and produced and edited and made into movies here, but based at least on characters that did exist in reality. So yeah. uh, that that could get dicey. Uh, it, it could we'll definitely assume so. <laughs> yeah. So again, the kind of history and part of this, I mean, yeah, definitely seems like most of the ways I've seen again popular media depictions of, again, the figure, Billy the Kid, all the events around it. Sure, there might be court involvings with it, but mostly it's the escape therein or the avoidance or those kind of things. Not exactly like, not a whole lot of courtroom dramas that I've seen as mm-hmm. part of these popular depictions, though. 
I don't know. I think there's definitely a place for it. So I'm excited about this one coming up here. So you've been doing this. It's been in formats, ways that you've been trying to do performances along these lines for, for some years now. Yes. And, and we're very, very lucky this year because we have Ross Marks mm-hmm. uh, directing the play. And as you know, he has directed a number of films. Uh, he's in charge of the Film Institute and the Film Festival in Las Cruces. So it's been an amazing experience with me to see the way he's been developing the characters. We've been practicing mm-hmm. now. Uh, we put in over 60 hours rehearsal. Yeah, okay. and, we'll, and we'll put in probably at least another 20, maybe 30 more hours as everybody kind of develops their character and starts feeling what the character was like. So there'll be two stagings of the play that we are talking about here, the trial of Billy the Kid, one again Friday, 7 p.m., and then another on Sunday at 2 p.m., and then, of course, surrounding this will be also, again, the movies, the musical performances, and uh, um, there is one more presentation actually also on that here that you'll be doing then uh, Sunday at 4 p.m., right? Uh, Yes, I'm going to give a, a very short presentation after the Sunday performance, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the details that we had to modify a little bit in the play and some of the things that we uh, emphasized and so on. But I'd like to point out that one ticket price, $25, gets absolutely. you into absolutely everything. Right? everything. And we do have, um, after the, the matinee on Sunday, we do have uh, Pat Garrett's great-grandson, uh, Scott Davis, coming mm. in, and he's going to be doing a, a presentation afterwards, too. There's a lot of the Garrett family still around uh, his granddaughter patsy still in susanna they live up in albuquerque and Ah, it's amazing to think how close that is that you mentioned to the the overlapping of history and and the times we're living in but anyway that's been a big motivation for us is the garrett background in in cruces and here in el paso too because absolutely you know he was he was in charge of he was customs inspector for four years and uh, when Teddy Roosevelt was president. They were good buddies, you know, <laughs> Pat and Teddy. I mean, there's a whole lot of swirling history all around this. And so I think it's very interesting the way you all are approaching this. Of course, I mean, again, you're doing, you know, plays, performances, dramatic reenactments, among other things, of yeah. these kind of things here. But not to be, like, in, in spite of the history, but in conjunction of it. I mean, there's certain things that history and reality doesn't necessarily always lend itself towards a good narrative because – history and reality don't care about narratives it's going to do what it did so mm-hmm. again for dramatic performances certain things have to be you know put into a format that's understandable but the way that you're also then combining it with a and okay, here is you know what also went on here are some more of the details that don't fit into like a dramatic reenactment kind of thing here that's all what's going on and then like you mentioned here this is a whole weekend festival so it's a festival ticket and it'll be all the stuff going on with it that friday saturday and sunday coming up again not this weekend but next weekend, they're at the Rio Grande Theater, again, 211 North Main Street. And again, uh, riograndetheater.com, where people can find that information. Already due for that first break of this hour right now. Again, joining me here in studio, we do have uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and uh, Dan Crow, vice president of the Friends of Pat Garrett, and a singer and songwriter. We're going to have a lot more presentations and discussion about a what is coming up, as well as some of the musical performances. We'll have to do some modifications for our uh, online audience, but we'll be playing some of those here. So, got to take that first break, so stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. 
M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. We are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. You can go there for uh, promo announcements just about every week, including seeing this broadcast and also what we got coming up for you. Also, the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can find a these broadcasts and essentially our archive, plus the entire series of El Paso Gold DVD from Capstone Productions covering more than the last couple of decades of history production here and in town and around the region uploaded completely for free for your viewing pleasure plus the more recent 20 ABC7 TV series from El Paso History TV kind of doing one of those introductions to major topics in history for the next generation was behind the camera and doing a lot of the producing on those myself and of course a reminder to support some of our advertisers including Pepe's Restaurant in Kenya Tia open for in-house dining at 6761 Donovan Drive call Pepe's at 915 877 that's 915-877-2152. Home of the one and only Margarita will be headed out there a little bit before the end of our program here today as a gathering will be happening there kind of basically right right at noon today because there are some uh, other events going on in town that I'll discuss here in just a minute. But in the meantime, we are, of course, joined here in studio by Dan David G. Thomas, a historian and writer, and Dan Crow, vice president and friends of the uh, Pat Garretts and the uh, singer and songwriter, and both of you all very involved in this again upcoming Billy the Kid Festival in both the kind of written, performative, and musical performance kind of ways here. So just to want to talk a little bit more about the way this will be working. Again, it's a one ticket full weekend experience kind of thing, all happening at the Rio Grande Theater up there in Las Cruces, right? Right, exactly. We're gonna have and you know it's something I was just thinking of, Andrew, in reference to something you said in the first segment about fact and legend and yeah. it reminds me of that famous quote from the man who shot liberty valance the movie where he <laughs> says you know when the truth becomes the legend print the legend <laughs> i think in this essence is what we're just doing here a bit we want to stay close to the history as we can and right. the play is definitely a historical as david knows and has written so much about but you know and we but we do have the, the we wanted to keep the format loose and fun and happy so that we have sure. them with through the movie in there and the music we're going to have a lot of audience participation excellent not just in the play also david you might want to mention that but the play that the, the way we have written the play the audience is the jury ah, and okay. the program that they get will have a bar has a barcode on it and after all the evidence has been presented and after the judge has given the final instructions to the jury then it'll be open for the audience to decide. And they can photograph that barcode, that QR code with their phone, and they can vote guilty or not guilty. Ah, and okay. depending on how the audience votes, that's how the play will continue. So there's two endings to the play. So there'll be two performances. We're interested to find out whether one performance he'll be guilty and one right. he'll be not guilty. One of the yes, yeah, split and or hung jury is coming up here for these. So that's a very interesting way to put it here. Definitely a lot of interaction. And so again, dramatic performances, artistic license is certainly possible, but it's not in a disregard for the historical fact because you're all making sure frankly, I'm always interested in entry points for people into understanding our history. And so as much as yes, facts, figures, dates, the dry information is important it's it's not necessarily the way you want to present it to like 
say, kids or the uninitiated or those just getting into this. So making it an accessible entry point into hopefully then learning further about it and also even contained within here as you're going to be having, you know, further talks, further discussions, more, you know, even like uh, people can ask questions during parts of these as well. Not the performance, but like the after talks as well. Don't shout during plays, please, uh, unless you're asked to. But, I mean, those kind of things, I mean, right. that, that's it's all baked together here. Yes, and and and, and during our musical concert, for example, we're gonna uh, we're gonna be it's gonna be a multimedia event. I'm gonna be showing we're gonna show a lot of images while we're performing. The band is on stage, all the musicians. It'll be up on the screen. You'll see a lot of the images of this these historical characters that we talk about in each song, and that's gonna be the first segment of the concert. And then we're gonna take an intermission and come back and just have a jam session, sing some old famous wonderful cowboy songs and western songs like absolutely that. so we'll talk more about that and we'll be playing some of the clips here uh, not for our online audience so we uh, will link to where they can also find it online just online rights is a weird thing in this modern age but anyway <laughs> we'll be doing this, some of that for our on-air audience but we're we'll talking even further about the performances how they'll be happening the play and kind of the basis of them and how that came about as well so of course talking a lot more about this what is coming up with the billy the kid festival this next weekend not this one don't worry you haven't missed it yet but make sure you make your plans for that next one but gotta take that next break of this hour right now so stay tuned for more on the el paso history radio show after this quick break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, want to mention some of our great partners in talking about aspects of our El Paso and regional history, including, of course, the great group over at Celebration of Our Mountains. Find them at celebrationofourmountains.org. They always have some events, hikes, ability to get out and about, or indoors as well. Don't worry. It's a whole lot of ways. Like uh, they're going out today to the uh, hike to the 10 mines, already going on by the time we're uh, playing back here today. So uh, you may have missed that one, though. There are plenty of hikes that go out to the 10 mines, even without this group. But say coming up next weekend, they will be doing some things with uh, seismology and the UTEP Seismic Lab. So that one will be indoors or early cacti on the Agave Loop Trail and a whole lot more other things. They often program through a decent point 
throughout the entire year. And it's a very good time to get out in the environment since we still got those varying on the day temperatures that are more conducive to being out and about. So check them out again, Celebration of Our Mountains.org. And if that's too much of a mouthful, just search Celebration of Our Mountains on your favorite search engine of choice here. And we appreciate their promotion of us as well. But again, joining me here in studio right now, we are do- joined by uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and Dan Crow, singer and songwriter, both contributing in their own ways and in different performances to the Billy the Kid Festival that is coming up next weekend, again, February 24th through the 26th at the Rio Grande Theater in Las Cruces, 211 North Main Street. So let's focus a little bit more on the performance of the play, specifically here. So, Dave, when it came to the actual creation of this, it started again with the book, and we popped that picture up a couple of times here. So how did the book come about? Well, uh, because Billy was tried in Mesilla, Mm. and I live in Las Cruces, it was right there. And it was a subject that I'd been fascinated with for 20 years, and I put in 15 years on the research. And one reason why so little has been written about it before is because even though there were two newspapers in Messiah at the time, they did, oddly enough, they did not write very much Hmm. about the the trial. But what's really intriguing about the trial, the Lincoln County War started with the cold-blooded, sadistic murder of John Henry Tunstall in 1878. And that's what kicked off the Lincoln County War, mm. which was a two-year war. And it maybe as many as 80 people were killed during that war. So, again, it, it exists in popular conception about kind of the background events of this. But for anyone who may not be familiar, how do you begin describing what the Lincoln County War was? It was a fight between two sides. Uh, one side, known as the uh, Santa Fe Ring, controlled the, politi- the politics, the economic, they covered controlled everything in that part of New Mexico. Mm. And Tunstall, who was an Englishman, came in, and he had money. He opened a store. He was in opposition to them. And because he was, that's why he was murdered. Now, what's interesting about the murder is that a posse went after him. They chased him for 30 miles. They murdered him in cold blood. They shot his horse Mm. as well. And they put his hat on his horse, and that was uh, to dis- that was ju- that was uh, showed their despise for him. Mm-hmm. Now they had no warrant for him, so this was so patently unfair that the two sides went to war, mm-hmm. and the person who organized the posse was Sheriff Brady, and so then later on, when Sheriff Brady was killed by these eight men from behind the Creel Wall, no one could tell exactly who fired the shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, 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 that's why this is an interesting story because there's the mystery. Did Billy really kill him? And the other thing was the governor issued a pardon for all these people that had killed all these 80 men during the Lincoln County war, except for three men. Hmm. And his pardon said that if you'd been indicted before the pardon did not apply to you and Billy happened to be one of them. Right. So in the end, only one person was ever tried for all those murders. And it was Billy the kid. And, so that was very unfair because everybody else got off for all the murders. And then did he really do it? I mean, we were talking about, I mean, it's, it's really easy kind of in the try to put modern sensibility on this. I mean, ideas about like, you know, private military corporations come to mind here. But, of course, this predates all of this. And we're talking about essentially small private armies. I mean, more like armed bands would be a, probably a fairer way to put it. But we're talking about kind of control of the land, control of resources in a way, the grazing rights, differences of types of grazing, all these kind of concepts wrapped up in here and a control of kind of and the way it's been a little bit more mythologized, and I'll use a little bit of that language right now, the destiny of the West, so to speak, at least regionally anyways, kind of concepts wrapped up in this, right? Yes, that's right. And, of course, it was two years after the killing of Tunstall that Pat Garrett finally arrested uh, Billy the Kid, mm. and he was arrested, and he was jailed in Las Vegas, New Mexico, jailed in Santa Fe. Then he was brought down to Mesilla mm. on March 28th, and the trial began um, on April his trial began on April 6, 1881. And we do actually have a picture of, uh, I believe that's the courthouse here, right? Yes, uh, that's the courthouse. Approximately, that's a year or two after the trial. Uh, by that time, it was very, very bad shape. It was built in 1865. I mean, it, it's Adobe, so, I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't exactly a, a granite ed- edifice or anything <laughs> like that. Right. Easy to escape, actually, that jail. 
from from my understanding. Among other things, like I mean, honestly, a lot of the places involved in this, including I've uh, been up to the jailhouse and the you know kind of historic downtown area in like Lincoln County previously, seen those vistas and and, and how that looks and how that works. And this one uh, that was two story, if I'm not mistaken about it. This one here, one story, you, you don't really get much more than one story when it comes to Adobe, frankly, at least not a good idea. Mm-hmm. But so this building actually still exists, and we have some of the kind of progression through the years. So yeah, this one right now is in 1883, but then about by, what was it, uh, uh, 1894, it was a uh, more than a little bit worse for the wear part of the building. It actually collapsed, the right? Back, the, the courthouse included the jail in the back part. That's the back part. It collapsed. But there were some refits, particularly of the front part here. And so this one is in about the 1930s, showing it a, a much nicer kind of like a storefront facade at that point, right? Yes. In fact, it was a bar and so on. But what's interesting about that picture is they painted bricks on it. So some people have been misled. Those are painted bricks. Okay. Yes. And then we had it uh, progressing into the uh, 1950s, black and white there, looking, yeah, it looks like they finally did away with that and just embraced the Adobe. And uh, this is actually looks like in a colorized photo then from the 1960s, and it, it still stands there today, right? Yes, it does. So it can still be seen there in uh, Old Messiah. If you go right, what street is that on now? Uh, it's on, um, well, it's, it's, op- it's, on, it's, it's on the street that, Parallels the plaza on the okay. eastern side. Yeah, eastern side. So people, anyone going up that way can still see it there. So just kind of the fact that through lines of this history still exist. But again, back to the whole concept. I mean, uh, I mean, there are going to be the plays and the performances, the movie uh, playing as well here with the you know the young guns showing the kind of some of those ideas involved with it. But getting into the historical factors that you were looking through in the book there and getting into how you put this together since there was not too much written on it. What kind of research did you end up having to do to get this together? Well, it had to all be primary research. So you couldn't turn to any other books that anyone else had written about it, of mm. course. So I spent, I spent, I, I visited archives all over the country. I visited mm. the National Archives. I visited archives in California, Colorado. A lot of, got a lot of material out of Colorado. Okay. Um, the Santa Fe uh, archives, the state archives in Santa Fe, uh, archives in Las Cruces, uh, probably 15 or 20 different archives. Okay. And so what, what kind of stuff were you then finding that you were able to then use as the source material? Well, for example, I was able to find the trial records. Ah, okay. And so I know what dates happened. Now, there's no actual transcript of the trial. Stenography didn't exist at that point in time, right? Well, the interesting thing is they did make a transcript, but in, unless the court case was appealed, they didn't pay for a formal transcript for the ah. file, so it was thrown away. Oh, geez. Okay. Which is just Sad. one of those frustrating for historians kind of moments, right? Yes. It's like, why would you ever throw away a document? But yes. it's not how regular people think. And these trials were very short lived. They were, they were one day trials. Most of them were, you know, through David, right? They, they didn't last long. They did not meet contemporary standards. Yes. Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the past is a foreign land. They did things differently there and particularly in, I mean, small i mean much smaller than today anyway politics kind of thing right yes <laughs> but uh the, ter- the the people that prosecuted billy they had all got off for the mm-hmm. murder of dunstall and billy was the last remaining symbol of the lincoln county war everything else had been pretty much settled and like i say it was two years later they desperately wanted to get him now the trial was fixed the trial was fixed by the judge and the way he fixed it is he wrote a five page instructions to the jury Mm. now we don't reproduce it all in the play but we do some of it it was written in english the jury was all hispanic according to the census records half could not read or write oh jeez. okay those instructions extremely complex long words long sentences was given to the jury only in english Uh, okay and that's what they that's the instructions on how they had to decide and the trial, of course, was held in English. The paper says there was a translator, but it was translated poorly. Mm. So it was all designed to rig the trial. This is something that no one had written about this before. They may have suspected it, but they couldn't prove it. Uh, okay. So they will have to talk a little bit more about that. And, of course, what the outcome of the trial is, no spoilers here just yet. But let's go ahead and take that next break right now. Again, joining us here in the studio, that's uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and also speaking here, uh, Dan Crow, a singer and songwriter, all about and background of what's coming up for the Billy the Kid Festival, again, happening February 24th through 26th at the Rio Grande Theater in Las Cruces. But taking that next break right now, so stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915 915- Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, some of our other great partners in promoting different aspects of El Paso's history and uh, kind of regional performances in its own right. Uh, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Find them online at talkandrockradio.com. That's talk, A-N-D, rock, radio. Of course, previous guests on the show here recently, anyway, talking about many of the remembrances and performances, current and previous, here in the region of a lot of the, you know, kind of golden age of rock and roll, both in town and nationally, but a lot more, including uh, current production and those still coming through town. So, again, find them and more recent episodes still in production and up with new episodes for this year, talkandrockradio.com. And, of course, uh, talking about some of our great sponsors on the program, call 915-588-1850. That's 915-588-1850. 1850 for Patrick Tuttle Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. Patrick is an excellent realtor to go to for El Paso homes for sale or rent. Uh, his team, him and his team are the reason I'm in the house that I am in currently and other members of my family as well in their houses. So again, 915-588-1850. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and Dan Crow, a singer and songwriter, both contributing in those respective ways to the upcoming Billy the Kid Festival happening uh, next weekend, February 24th through the 26th at the Rio Grande Theater in Las Cruces. So just want to put a pin in some of the major parts of talking about the history and what you put into the book of the trial of Billy the Kid that we were talking about there, have the uh, cover shown up on screen there right now, is still available. But so is it just for this set of performances that this was then turned into the play, essentially? Well, yeah, I based the play upon this book. Mm -hmm. But what what's very interesting is how many historical people, personage, were in the play. Colonel Albert J. Fountain was Billy's defense attorney. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, one of the witnesses against Billy was named Santernino Baca. Uh, he was a very famous man in New Mexico. Uh, he'd fought in the Civil War for the, for the Union. Um, he was he he was the person when he was one of the, he was elected to the very first legislature in New Mexico, and they wanted to name the county after him, and he said no. He introduced a bill and said, "We're going to name it name it after our late pres President Lincoln." So yeah. the county was named after him. His son also testified. Both of them testified against Billy. His son um, Bonifacio Baca. He was a graduate of Notre Dame University. He was mm. one of the best educated men in the county. So the people involved in this trial, it's not just Billy the Kid, but uh, the people themselves are very important historical figures in New Mexico. The yeah. defense attorney was Newcomb, and he's a little bit less well-known, Simon Newcomb, mm -hmm. but he replaced a man named Reinerson, 
And Reinerson was doing everything he possibly could to get Lincoln convicted. He's the one that transferred the, the trial from Lincoln to Messia. And in the document that he submitted to the court, he says he will be acquitted so what in was, Lincoln. So then we've got to ask the natural question, what was the outcome of this trial? Spoilers, okay. but. This is a spoiler. Uh, but everybody knows, of course, he was convicted of murder. And the territorial law at the time said that the, you had to be hung within to be hung in 30 days. Hmm. Now, the crime had happened that he was convicted of in Lincoln, so he had to be sent to Lincoln to hang. Hmm. And, of course, it was from Lincoln that he managed to escape. But what's interesting about it is the territorial Supreme Court only met twice a year. Hmm. And it wasn't going to meet until after he was going to be hung. Uh. So he appealed to the governor for a stay long enough to appeal his case, and that was denied. Hmm. So he had no opportunity to appeal his case. He was hung. He was going to be hung in 30 days. He managed to get about 30 days of extra freedom when he escaped, and of right. course, Pat Garrett killed him. Right, and the, the history that is dramatized, again, within like the movie and the other things that will also be a part of these performances here. And again, don't want to miss on the fact that there's also going to be the musical parts of this, Sing the Legend as you have it there in the program the legend, yeah. happening there. But we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the second hour of the program here because, again, all this is going to be on feature in the very different aspects of what we're talking about here at the Billy the Kid Festival, again, happening uh, February 24th through the 26th at the Rio Grande Theater there in Las Cruces. So people want to find out more information about that. There is the Rio Grande Theater dot com. That's theater spelled T H E A T R E dot com. But search Rio Grande Theater and you're probably going to find it up on there if you can go online. So the performance is all these things for the three days of the entire festival, one ticket, and all of this comes with it, right? Yeah. It. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So we're going to be talking more about this and, of course, uh, having some more of the musical clips, more performances, more of kind of all this stuff involved with it and what goes into the uh, history surrounding all of this here. We'll probably have to talk a little bit more about uh, the play itself and how this kind of came about, how you went from the book then to that. But all that coming up in the second hour of the program here, uh, again, going to continue to join us here will be uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and Dan Crow, uh, vice president of the Friends of Pat Garrett, of course, here, but also singer and songwriter. So stick around with us, y'all, and you stick around with us us there as well listening on air as we come with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSN. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m number one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. 
Chick. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thanks for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or over on our various social media pages. We are up on these days, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch.tv, either under Andrew J. Polk, the El Paso History Radio Show or El Paso History TV, and of course on some of our great partner pages and groups, including Remember at El Paso When. But starting on hour two of the program, as we usually do right now with a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk, talking this week about the start of the El Paso Public Library. The El Paso Public Library is the longest continuously active public library system in Texas. Mary Irene Stanton, an El Paso area teacher, single-handedly became founder of the El Paso Public Library in 1894 when she donated her personal collection of 1,000 books for a boys' reading club housed in a room in the Sheldon Building. The next year, women were also allowed to access the collection. In December 1899, 4,000 books owned by Mary Stanton and Fanny Clark were moved from their location in the Sheldon Hotel to El Paso City Hall. Stanton, the city's first librarian, began cataloging the books in 1899. But El Paso citizens wanted to have a separate library. Petitions were formed and circulated for a standalone library. Assistance came in 1902 from philanthropist Andrew Carnegie when the Carnegie Foundation provided the El Paso Library Association a grant of $37,500 to build a classically styled library to house the growing collection. In agreement with the Carnegie formula, which stipulates that a municipality must also provide support for the public library, the city council agreed to a tax to support the efforts. The new library was built on the old cemetery site at Buckler Square. The library opened on April 1904 in the newly named Carnegie Square. By 1919, the new Carnegie Library needed repair and the collection had outgrown its home. In fact, many books were housed in branches in four drug and grocery stores. The library's collections continued to grow, and in 1951, voters approved building the current main library on Oregon Street in downtown El Paso. The Carnegie Building was demolished in 1968. Today, the El Paso Public Library has 17 locations and a bookmobile. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. I also want to mention some of our other, again, great partner groups and pages for all the things that we do here to talk about El Paso history, specifically Barbara Given Bainey, the operator of the great Facebook group called Remember in El Paso When. You can go there for archive pictures galore of both lived and uh, before living memory history. There's just a whole lot of images that they do a great job of researching and putting up and more than 34,000 members as of last check. So it's no mean feat to keep such a group on track. So a lot of credit to be given to the moderator and administrator staff, but they do ask that if you're using any of the pictures to give them credit as a lot of research goes into the pictures with our history attached. And so again, a lot of credit to be given to, again, Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as a BGB. Also, Admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and Jim Gerber, and moderators Ben Vincent and Dan Graves. They're always looking for a few more good hands when it comes to, again, keeping a group like this on track. I can't remember the amount of groups that I've been in that have uh, fallen off track, shall we say, or just been inundated with spam. So in order to keep doing that, they do require a little bit of assistance. So if you want to be a part of their uh, moderation or administration staff, please reach out to them again. Remember, in El Paso when name of the page, Remember in El Paso When. But again, joining us here in studio right now as we're talking about our subjects here today, we do have uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and Dan Crow, the uh, singer and songwriter, both involved in your own ways and in those veins with the upcoming Billy the Kid Festival that will be happening again this coming weekend, February 24th through the 26th at the Rio Grande Theater there in Las Cruces, uh, 211 North Main Street, uh, information at riograndetheater.com. So we were talking a lot about the play and the the movies that kind of go along with it, the, let's just call it, you know, regular performance of the history. But that's not to say that that's the only way it'll be presented, because particularly for uh, you, Dan, when it comes to the performances, you're doing this in music, the uh, kind of subtitled Sing the Legend part of it, right? <laughs> yes, that's correct, Andrew. Uh, yeah, we just uh, this all really did start back in 1981, just really a side note. I had been writing around, my wife's from Las Cruces originally, so I was back with a good friend of mine, and he was dating Pat Garrett's granddaughter at the oh, time, <laughs> Patsy Garrett, 
And uh, Patsy and Dale and I were riding around the pecan orchards in Las Cruces one evening, and she was very, she expressed, I was playing in a band out in L.A. at the time during the urban cowboy, cowboy days, I guess you could call them. Okay. <laughs> you remember those days. Anyway, uh, but it was, we were, she just mentioned that she said, Dan, you know, you're writing songs and doing this music I, about the West, too. And I was, and my grandfather, Pat Garrett, we, my dad and I both agree that he never was very wasn't appreciated in the history of the territory as much as he should have and billy the mm-hmm. kid was glorified and and pat was vilified and i i and i heard this and she said would you write a song about my grandfather and i said well that's a challenge sure i guess i will and since it was 1981 which was only 100 years after oh, that's true. Pat shot billy the kid and established this reputation initially there uh but he was doing his duty he was the you know, county sheriff, you know, out doing, stalking the, the bandit. And uh, anyway, I I just inspired me to create that song and the Law Dog Lament and then a whole bunch of songs after that. Too. Absolutely. So we'll uh, actually have some playback of those that we'll do here in just a minute. But that's kind of, uh want to get into that, that figure of it because, of course, these being real people and it not being, okay, outside living memory, sure, that that's pretty fair to say, but not outside of generational memory in its own way because we've got, I mean, stories passed down, I mean, both written and then folk history and then, again, you know, just fa- fa- family history that is still a part of this as we still have the descendants of some of these people involved with this that are still around there and you can still see it in a few ways. I want to say it was the the hearse that carried Pat Garrett was still in the uh, Doniana County Sheriff's Office mm-hmm. kind of front lobby area there for years done as a personal aside as i was doing news reporting in that area sometimes i'd be camped out at a desk right next to the hearse because we were doing something involving the sheriff's department and it would just happen to be right there and it sometimes would kind of absurdly strike me about the fact that i'm just doing this kind of mundane daily task next to this emblem of our local history but that kind of is a kind of good example of how it is still steeped within our community in this region at large. Absolutely. Yeah, that hearse was uh, is now at the Farm and Ranch Museum. Right. And, uh, yeah, but we know that when they disassembled that entire um, that entire museum at the, the county sheriff's office right. there, uh, we all ended up with certain items that came our way that we've held on to to preserve them until we can find a nice museum to put them in ourselves. I have Pat Garrett's uh, little wicker chair that he had oh, really? when he was the uh, – County Sheriff in 1896 when he came back to New Mexico in 1897. I that's that's his chair that he sat at his desk in. It's got a little lean back system in it because he was a tall guy, you know, six yeah, five, okay. and had some back issues. And <laughs> they say, but anyway, I I think that's fascinating. I'm looking at this in one of our bedrooms. There's Pat Garrett's chair sitting there in the corner. Wow, <laughs> crazy. And, so, uh, yeah, that stuff kind of exists around here. So that's how you kind of started putting together some of this. So let's let's talk about that first song that you were mentioning there, the uh, uh, Law Dog Lament. Let's play a little bit of this here right now. So again, this is your song that you wrote, and uh, who's performing in this? I am, and uh, I have Steve Smith, who's a renowned uh, mandolin and guitar musician uh, from Las Cruces and w- known worldwide for sure, and uh, Ann Luna, who is his ba- the bass player, and Chris Sanders is doing it, who is lots of musicians all right so let's play a little bit of that this will not be for our online audience unfortunately because uh digital rights and all that kind of thing but uh, here is again law dog lament out there right. is uh definitely a, exactly. a part of kind of you get the sense of the issues you were talking about there being in, infused into this song there. right yeah yeah exactly and the, and the once again the the glorification of the kid and the <laughs> and bat carrot not having his historic historic due but yeah no that was that was just the, the start of that whole process of creating these historical songs you know that, that came out of that 
So yeah, that was a that was a I I had never recorded the song until just this past year when oh, I really? did the album because we'd performed it live for years and years and years. So and I did have to I, Patsy had not heard it for a long time and I sent it to her a couple of years ago I guess or whenever and I well after we recorded it and she just uh, she did approve of it. Thank goodness. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that, that's kind of getting into what we talked about at the earlier part of the first hour about how there is both celebration, condemnation, you know, praise, scorn, all swirling emotions around a lot of these figures involved with these stories that happened in and around our region. So there's a lot of different perspectives to be explored as part of this. And so that's, again, the uh, law, law dogs lament, as you put it there, kind of what you're focusing on there. So you mentioned a little bit about how it kind of initially came about. So what did you do to kind of look into and then put that into music? Because obviously a little bit different than putting it into, like, say, you know, writing or ending up in a play. So kind of what, what kind of mindset and kind of purpose did you have in mind when you were putting that together? Well, I didn't want it to be, I didn't want to be too serious about it, but I did want to pay respect to the historic process. So I, I did put some humor into the song because I sure. wanted it to be, you know, in it, in it. And I think, uh, and I think as the song goes through, I you process uh, I, from the recording. If I can show the CD. Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, was, sorry. This is, uh, this was uh, Science Kicks and Saddle Pals that, uh, that we put out last year, May, and it has a lot of the songs that we're going to be doing at the festival. Mm. And La Dog La Man is on it, and um, it was a uh, yeah. You know, I'm like that's my sister and I when we were little. <laughs> uh-huh, okay. <laughs> anyway, but it's uh, it, it was uh, yeah that that particular song just kicked it all off for me to keep you know this this history of the uh, and I think ballads. It look they've been around forever. You know the uh, you you played some Marty Robbins obviously the El Paso yeah, sure. at the yeah. beginning and he did that the the original Billy the Kid song that was mm, written mm. 1927 when the book came out the bat, the saga of Billy the Kid mm. there was Jesse James the day the, a week after he was shot in 1882 the there's there was a folk song that was around the country already the Ballad of Jesse James and so this is okay so this has been going on for a long time the troubadours you know singing the the songs and the ballads of uh, the historic figures in this case. So kind of a lot of what you took inspiration through and kind of infused into here, it sounds exactly. like. Exactly, you betcha. And so that, of course, be a part of, again, your performances that will be going on with the Billy the Kid Festival, the Sing the Legend, mm-hmm. uh, you know, iconic Crow and Carla yourself there, of course, but a lot of other performers will be joining you as well to do, again, uh, songs about Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, uh, Stagecoach Mary Fields, The Fountain Mystery, uh, Deacon Jim Miller, and and much more. So, I mean, how long have the performance will this be as part of the festival do you think it'll be about two hours in total okay. um, we're, we're going to do an, uh, like i said be, beginning set will be more multimedia we'll be showing us a lot of images right. there's a it's a fascinating thing i found an old uh, kinescope film clip really online on uh, youtube it's anybody can see it of bob fitzsimmons who was the heavyweight champion of the world from 1897 to 1899 and he was he fought James J. Corbett, who was mm-hmm. a famous fighter who fought against who took his title, um, you know, from, uh, years before a year before that. And Corbett Fitzsimmons fight, you can actually watch the fight from 1897, the from wow. Reno, Nevada. The two back boxers out there in this old black and white kinescope film clip, <laughs> and so, it's uh, anyway. Of course, that relates to another song that we'll play another clip from here in the coming segment. But gotta take that next break right now. Again, that's Dan Crow, a singer and songwriter, also joining us here in studio. Uh, David G. Thomas, historian mm-hmm. and writer, all talking about what is going to be coming up and the performances, history, etc., surrounding it for the Billy the Kid Festival happening this coming weekend, February twenty fourth through twenty sixth. But more on those details, more on the performances, and more on some of the media that we got handy for you after this next break here on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano 
and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, M numeral one, ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-58. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. I want to talk to you a little bit about what's coming up on the next week on the program. As we're reaching the end of the month of February, of course, Black History Month is a notable thing that goes on with that. So we're going to be talking about some of that history and in a very particular way, what went on with the Buffalo Soldiers, their deployments and involvements in and around this region. We'll be talking with uh, uh, Fort Bliss military historian John Hamilton on what can be seen, some of the renamings that have happened around our region and on and off post in recognition of that. So that'll be going on next week on the program, talking about the Buffalo Soldiers for the end of the month here. Of course, uh, one more sponsor we want to remind you about that helps support us in this program and a Blake. Great place to go with out-of-town visitors for souvenir, jewelry, decor, and gift items. Mission Del Rey Southwest, tons of selection of both literal and figurative flavors of the Southwest, including you know, great decor items, uh, woven tapestries, rugs, and then again, literal flavors when you talk about food items and other things that are consumables that are available out there. They got that 12,000 square foot showroom out on Lee Trevino and Pelicano near the intersection. Just head up Lee Trevino, turn left on Pelicano, and look for the Mission Del Rey sign and you'll find them pretty easily or find them online, missiondelray.com. They do ship around the world and across the nation. So mention the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount. Give them a call if you got any questions about this or need to find them, 915-440-2140. That's 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we are joined by uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and Dan Crow, the vice president of the Friends of Pat Garrett, but also a singer and songwriter in a lot of ways for uh, what we are talking about with the history right now. So we're playing a little bit of the music that you had put together, that previous one, the uh, uh, Law Dog Lament. But as you were kind of mentioning before we went into the break there, part of the performance that you'll be doing, that of uh, Bob Fitzsimmons. So kind of recap briefly what what that story going into the song is a little bit about. Sure. Um, When this relates to El Paso history, uh, because when when Garrett, okay, after the fountain disappearance, real quick, yeah, they mm-hmm. they were there was gonna about three weeks later there was a heavyweight fight scheduled to take place in El Paso uh, for, between Bob Fitzsimmons and the Irish champion uh, Peter Maher, and they were gonna fight here in El Paso. Well, it turned out that everybody came to El Paso to get ready to, for the fight, but then they found out that just a week before that the that the state that that Texas was outlawing prize fighting, so they couldn't have it in. <laughs> mm-hmm. So let's we'll take it across the border. We'll go to Juarez. Well, Mexico had outlawed prize fighting uh-huh. also. So these people were all in town for the fight, and a lot of people had come down from Las Cruces. So some of the civic leaders and were in a hotel here in El Paso. We're talking about Albert Fall and uh, mm-hmm. George Curry, who's the, and I think Neil Fountain might have been part of that crew. Gov- Governor Thornton. Yeah, Governor Thornton, exactly. So there was this whole crew, that, group of people down here. And the Fountain disappearance had happened a few weeks before. Well, what happened was the, the Fitzsimmons fight had to be 
replaced some pl- somewhere. Yeah. So Ju- <laughs> Judge Roy Bean, of all people, Langtree, Texas, will bring the train over to Langtree. We'll put the fight on in a sandbar in the middle of the river between <laughs> Mexico and Texas. And that way we can get it in. And they did it. They had the fight. They brought it in. Bat Masterson to do all the, the, he was the security guy for the fight. Anyway, so Fitzsimmons and Maher went over there and fought. And the, the fight lasted, I think, 34 seconds or something like that. Oh, all that. <laughs> Fitzsimmons knocked him out in the first round. But it's amazing. You can see some, there's some great footage in front of you. There's actually like visuals along with that, which is not something you often think about when it comes to this era of history. But it's, it's right on the cusp there. I mean, there's a reason we have, of course, that picture of billy the kid because it was you know a nascent tech i mean it's not saying it's a great picture i'm just saying it's a picture because it was nascent technology at that <laughs> point in time but so again some of the year got the song that is based on that again uh bob fitzsimmons and part of the performance is coming up for the billy the kid festival So again, with the performances, uh, who were part of the performances on this particular one? Well, that once again, that was produced and arranged by my good friend Steve Smith uh, and um, featured uh, Chris Sanders singing with me on that one and uh, also Ann Luna and several other local musicians from El Paso and from Las Cruces. And we, uh, yeah, we had a, we just had a great time recording these songs. It was so much fun. Yeah, they ended up, that, that I mean, I'm going to a little quick addition to this the reason that that group that was waiting for, the, for that fight, that's mm-hmm. the reason they, because Pat Garrett at that time was over in Uvalde, Texas, with Ranch in over there, oh, okay. and they they wanted to bring him back. They decided in that hotel room in El Paso to bring him back to the area to investigate the fountain disappearance, and that was uh-huh. all because of that fight that led to that them pat coming back to new mexico because i mean yeah there wasn't exactly pay-per-view kind of events at that point in time i mean you would have to i mean even just the coming down from las cruces i tend did not exist so no. if that was not a oh fine we'll just hop back you know grab an uber back to las cruces no you weren't doing that if you were here you were like okay well what are we going to do here now it's another yeah. day to get back there so we got to do something around here so i mean trains made it a little bit easier those kind of concepts but I mean, th- this happening as a fight, even if it lasted all of 34 yeah, seconds, yeah, I know. it was still an event and everything around it. I mean, significant things People going on. came from it. all over the country for the fight, you know, journalists from everywhere. And then one guy, the story, one guy was looking over at his buddy. He was a journalist from Chicago and he turned and he was talking to him and then he missed the fight. He just no. looked up and it was over. It's over. <laughs> Oh, that's fascinating <laughs> in its own right here. So, again, that's uh, Dan Crow, the uh, singer and songwriter on this and some of the other performances coming up, as well as, of course, joining us here in studio, uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer. All, again, so a lot of their stuff going to be up here during the Billy the Kid Festival coming up this next weekend. So not this one, the coming one, February 24th through 26th here. But we got to take that next break right now. So coming out of this break, we'll talk more about that, at least probably one more audio clip and more about the performances after this break here on News Radio 690. KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 
915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, some of our other great partners in promoting both this program and the parts that we talk about of El Paso History, El Paso Wink. You can go there for our weekly promo announcements in the B section of the paper, among other things, and El Paso's business journal, El Paso Wink, is available for home or business delivery to receive El Paso Wink and get their in-depth and unique reporting coming out every week. Go to ElPasoInc.com. Again, can you either get it physically or just straight to your inbox every week there. Again, ElPasoInc.com. We certainly appreciate them and the way they help us promote and uh, remember aspects of El Paso history like what we're talking about here today as we're still joined here in studio by uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and uh, Dan Crow, uh, singer and songwriter. All their performances and a lot of your all work going into the Billy the Kid Festival that will begin coming up next week. Again, February 24th through the 26th. So at least one more bit of music that we want to play because we've talked a lot about some of the history and the performances that will be happening in both plays and the uh, movie Young Guns that will be a part of what happens during the festival. But so when it comes to at least one more bit, we got one more song clip that we're going to play a bit of here of uh, the Coffin Note. And this one has a few different bits of history and kind of conjunction a little bit between y'all in between this, right? Uh, David, you should... Maybe talk start with the, about the note, the inspiration of the Well, the interesting song. thing about the coffin note is that Colonel Fountain was pursuing a group of 21 men for cattle rustling. Mm. And he went to Lincoln by buggy uh, to, to get the convictions. Um, he had been threatened. He'd received threatening letters and so on. So his wife said, take your son with you. Mm. They won't mm. dare hurt you. Well, it was a three-day trip. He got the convictions. He got the, uh, he got the indictments, I should say. No, sure. When he walked out of the courthouse... A stranger walked up to him and handed him a folded sheet of paper, and when he opened it up, it said, to paraphrase it, it said, if you agree to drop these charges, throw this paper down. If you don't, you won't get home alive. Mm. He did not throw it down. Now, that was known as a coffin note, and that had come out in the conflict between labor and management in the coal mines in Ohio. And if the management was doing something the workers found totally unacceptable, they'd give them this paper and it said, you don't stop doing this, we're going to kill you. Mm. And they did. And so that was known as a coffin note. Well, of course, he was followed all the way back home. It was a three-day trip back home. Right. And just uh, past White Sands, he was abducted. The bodies were never found. Right. The disappearance happened, and so this is what kind of goes into then the song, right? And that was the inspiration of the song, the coffin note, and I and there was a lot of emotion involved in it because of the fact that Henry was on a little boy was eight years old, right? And the Colonel was and they um, and Mariana, the Colonel's wife, had been the one that had suggested they she you know, like David said, take the boy with you so they won't harm you, but it didn't turn out that way, and it it's just a very sad story, but. So the song had to be a soft kind of ballad that would that addressed that 
that disappearance. So here is that then, the coffin note. So who are the performers with you on this one then? Well, it was the same crew. I had <laughs> the producer and arranger Steve Smith and and uh, and that we were, Steve and I were sharing some of the guitar parts on there, but we also uh, had a lovely voice of Chris Saunders. She's just an amazing vocal teacher and the singer performer and and uh, and any these are all people that knew the history too, which is very important that when you're performing these songs, mm -hmm. you're aware of what's what you're singing about and talking about, whether it be Pat Garrett or, or the Fountain Mystery or, you know, or Bob Fitzsimmons, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's so much history around in this area. So knowing parts of it being performed in this way, I mean, that's essentially what kind of comes down to it. This is not a, a musical performance, an excuse to kind of shoehorn in a little bit of music into this other thing. It's all based in the stories around it. And frankly, kind of maybe a little bit more true to the way it would have been shared at that point in time, like you were mentioning, that in the in the contemporary times, we're talking about of these individuals, some of these historic events were, I mean, before there was social media, before there was uh, tweets or instant you know, breaking news updates, newsletter, emails. This is how stuff passed around pretty quickly. And so getting the story behind the music, it was almost kind of like the uh, update to the, you know, the old uh, you know saints and the symbology around them about how getting the lessons from it for an Ill illiterate population, for a population that didn't have access to any information, a song was a pretty easy way to get at least uh, an idea of information passed along yes indeed and and of course obviously it's just like we're living times of living now there were all of these political differences oh, yeah, of course yeah. back then and you know people and that was what led to that disappearance the fountain mystery for sure and other mm -hmm. things and and one of the things that's really fascinating is colonel fountain gets this coffin note mm -hmm. okay he gets back he um, he's, he's he gets abducted Mm. The trial of the men they think did it is two years later. They have not found the coffin note. Two years into the trial, really? they found it hidden so thoroughly really? in the buggy. They had searched the buggy, mm -hmm. um, and it was only in the trial that they found it. They weren't able to use the note in the they trial. They did find it. Wow. But I might mention also that uh, Dan's uh, album has hit number 12 on the Cowboy and Western part. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We got some of at least uh, notes or reviews about it as well. I think we got that picture up on screen from uh, Rick Huff's uh, Best of the West reviews and of, uh, yeah, your uh, uh, Dan Robert Crow and that album there. So congrats on that. Thank you. The reason I buy that we put the Robert in there is because I have mentioned earlier I do a lot of work with kids and families and audi that audience for a long, long time. So that was under Dan Crow, you know, and I didn't want to, I wanted to put the Robert in so they knew that this was a Western album, a different kind of yeah, okay. theme to it, you know, didn't sing about bubblegum and rainbows, <laughs> you know. Fair enough. A previous branding and uh, being a departure from that, certainly <laughs> exactly. understand that. So again, this and, I mean, they all have these songs, I'm sure, and many others. I mean, just some of the, again, topics you're planning to cover, again, the Sing the Legend part of it, Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, Stagecoach Mary Fields, The Fountain Mystery, Deacon Jim Miller, and more. So there's a whole lot of aspects that we'll be going into, again, in the, in the musical sense. And may I mention, too, this is the big motivation for the concert and performing with is my good friend Carla Steen. He, she as Crow and Carla because right. we discovered that we could we sounded pretty good singing together, <laughs> and we write we write together too. And this all started with a song we composed together about uh, the love letters that uh, Paula Nadia, uh, who is Pat Garrett's wife, when Pat Garrett were exchanging back in the time, and mm. uh, and, it's, and the song is called Carita Esposa. 
and it's also Carido Esposo. So we do it that way, both ways yeah, in okay. Spanish. And we'll be performing that at the festival also. And again, you got this up on streaming services. People can check that, particularly for our yes. online audience who we had to uh, mute these sections because of online rights and mm-hmm. usage, all that kind of stuff. So if you missed that, we'll post up the links to uh, where they can find you on streaming there as okay. well uh, as part of our presentation here today. But so, I mean, all of this is just one facet of it. But of course, uh, you know, the uh, subject, I mean, titular name, Billy the Kid, and the figure around this here is one of the major focuses. So I kind of want to go back to the, uh, again, uh, David, your book that was the, again, trial of Billy the Kid. That is uh, at least, uh, I, I would say, an inciting factor of one of the major parts of this festival. I mean, you're going to be doing the two performance of it anyway. And turning that kind of like this was being, you know, some of these historical things being turned into the songs like you had there, Dan, that when it comes to the turning the book into the performance then and the different ways about it, I mean, not everything translates from, you know, page to stage essentially here. So any real modifications or, or differences that you know stand out to you about how this has now come about in this way? Well, since no one else had really written anything right. s- significant about the trial, uh, it was a it was a voyage of discovery for me. So I started finding these documents. I mean, everybody had pretty much assumed it was a reasonable trial. It was fair. He got sure. convicted. They may not. They may have thought it was unfair in the sense he was the only man that was ever prosecuted for all these murders. Mm. But everybody assumed the trial was more or less fair. Well, as I found these documents particularly when I found the document of the instructions that the judge had given to the jury. Now, Fountain wrote up his own instructions, and they would work in a modern trial. You have to be okay. convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that he fired the bullet that killed Sheriff Brady. Recognizable language to a modern audience, exactly. basically. Okay. The judge threw those out, <laughs> okay. and he substituted his own. So it was so as I went through this and learned these things, and this, this court session lasted a month, There were two other men that were tried for murder at the time. They were both convicted, sentenced to hang, and they were both hung in Messiah. Mm. Okay? Okay. So I'm discovering all these sort of events. So at the end of this, I realize how unbelievably unfair this trial is Mm. and how it's manipulated by the judge who was a member of the Santa Fe Ring and had done many, Uh, many things before that were very biased and illegal uh, against against Billy's side. So then when it came to making the play, of course, from from my research, I knew how unfair it was. Well, you couldn't have a play that was just totally, obviously unfair. So it became sure. necessary to make the play balanced enough so that people could see both sides of the argument. Okay. Okay. So there is evidence, of course, that Billy is the one that, that killed Brady, and there's real evidence of that. Sure. And there's also evidence that he wasn't the one, but he was with the people that did do it. And so he maybe he would be convicted as an accomplice. So the, the, the difficulty was producing the play that represented both sides fairly enough so that the audience would actually have to think about the evidence a little bit and make their own mind. And when they go to vote as jury members, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to give them 10 minutes to make their decision. They are deciding, they get to decide whether whether Billy the Kid lives or dies. This historic trial, in some ways perhaps the most famous trial of all Western history, they will be deciding whether Billy dies or whether he walks out of that courtroom a free man. Interesting. So, again, that's one of the parts of the, again, upcoming Billy the Kid Festival. We'll talk a little bit more about that and the staging of it and all the performances and, again, how you can go and see it for yourself. So, got to take that last break of this hour right now. So, stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. 
Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso. Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I have been your host, Andrew J. Polk, and of course, joining me here in studio have been uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and Dan Crow, vice president of the Friends of Pat Garrett, and a singer and songwriter in his own right. And again, a lot of what we were talking about here going to be a feature and focus of the upcoming Billy the Kid Festival that happening uh, at the Rio Grande Theater, February 24th through the 26th. So not this this weekend, but next weekend, they're at uh, 211 North Main Street up in Las Cruces. So information and details there, riograndtheater.com, or just search it up on your search engine and it'll come right up. I found it uh, pretty easily enough here. So it is a whole weekend event. So the that entry fee, $25, is the weekend pass. So it's for all three days, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, of course, this has been, a, I'm, I'm sure, like you said, a lot of work leading up to this. I mean, even just the working on the staging of the play here. You got your uh, tech week upon you here, I'm sure. So a lot of the uh, final touches being put on. So, I mean, what are you most excited about when it comes to actually seeing this in performance and seeing this happening? Um, I'm extremely excited to see how the vote goes. Oh, yeah. And uh, since there'll be two performances, actually, um, if you voted not guilty on Friday night and you get, went home and you thought about it a little bit <laughs> and you said, oh, that was a mistake, well, then you can attend on Sunday and you can vote the opposite. You can vote guilty if you want. <laughs> but the fact mm -hmm. that... Uh, we've tried to make it as balanced as possible so that you really do have to consider the evidence. We present the evidence in the trial. Sure. Uh, and, you've got to, and, of course, you've got to follow the law. You've got to make your decision based on the law. You can't use preconceived notions. You can't use gossip or slander. So you're sure. going to have to just listen to the evidence. And, of course, the... Uh, the dramatic part of this, the you know audience involvement is, is a certainly a fun aspect, but this is not to be disregarding of the actual history because you have all these uh, talks and focus on it all, all around this here. And if you are doing, again, the music component as well and you know uh, the playing of the movie of Young Guns, that show just, again, a lot of dramatic artistic license taken with some of these things as is, you know, it, it happens and is a part of it and no one should be surprised, but you still have that firm focus in the history of it. Again, a good entry point for people to get, if, if they have no idea about this, if they had certain notions, maybe just those kind of like vague pop culture or, you know, popular representations of these subjects here, you kind of drill down into it, particularly then on Sunday when you have like the after the play presentations, including by members of the Garrett family or descendants of and then, you know, the actual historical perspective that you'll also be doing there. So, I mean, all of this, it's all wrapped up in a package of many different facets, but focused still firmly in the history, right? My, my most, the thing I'm most excited about is to being able to play with these renowned musicians that are oh, going to be with us. Carla and I are going to have, you know, Steve Smith and uh, Ann Luna and Sweet Mary Hattersley, who was from the Austin band Greasy Wheels that was, was in the <laughs> Austin Hall of Fame. So... We're really honored that they're all joining us on the music. It's going to be a bla really 
good sound. I guarantee that. <laughs> and again, with the music, and I mean, people will be able to get the music, and, you know, check it out for themselves, and you know, have it uh, for the future as well. Again, all of this, the, the focus on the history, I find to be very important because there's a lot of. You can find a lot of fluff on these or a lot of like, oh, well, that's just how we'll present it for, you know, in a digestible way. And certainly that's a part of this. But getting into the actual occurrences and, and all the gritty details of it as well is still very much a focus here. Yes, exactly. That was our original goal. Yep. And I hope we've achieved it. But I, I want to invite everybody. Absolutely. Who has any interest in Texas, New Mexico history, uh, this time period, uh, please consider coming. We will welcome you. Yes, and we want to thank all of those local merchants that have helped to sponsor this event too. They've got a lot of a lot of participation, so thank you to them. Absolutely. So, how big? I haven't actually been to the Rio Grande Theater myself. I will admit that deficiency. How how big of a theater is this place? It can hold about four hundred people. Yeah. So, so lots of tickets available, but make sure they get them before they uh, end up selling out. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And if you miss it on Friday, you can go on Sunday. But you better show up for Saturday. And you can go to both if you want to see it again and maybe a different verdict, right, an outcome, David, yes. <laughs> on sa- yes. Sunday then from Because you do have the both different outcomes there as well. So, exactly. again, all the details on this, on the, again, upcoming Billy the Kid Festival happening, again, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, February 24th through the 26th at the Rio Grande Theater, uh, 211 North Main Street. RioGrandeTheater.com is the place where all the details and information can be found. And so that definitely leads to the the question here. You've been doing different kind of versions-ish of this, been working on stuff like this. Is this going to be kind of a continuing tradition of doing this or other performances, other plays, other things coming up in the future? Well, this is our third festival, Mm -hmm. and we're certainly considering one for next year. Yes, we are. And we might want to go back with our focus more on Pat, the Garrett family, and all that, too, possibly. but. Hey, let's give Billy the Kid his due. Here we go. <laughs> Fair enough. And it's certainly a, a lightning rod and a focus and controversy in its own right. So it makes a lot of sense here. So, sure. again, Billy the Kid Festival, Rio Grande Theater, February 24th through the 26th. So uh, that's going to about do it for us for today. I want to thank, again, our guests who have been here in studio with us, uh, uh, David G. Thomas, historian and writer, and uh, Dan Crow, singer and songwriter. Thank you all very much for talking about thank what's you, coming up and what people can see this coming weekend. Okay. Thank we you. appreciate it very much. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you all very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. We'll see you next week back on the program, 10 to noon, here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Have a great weekend, y'all.